Welcome to part two of Let's Play Caverns of the Snow Witch by Ian Livingstone. Um, at the end of the last part, I was on paragraph 77. Okay, um, are you carrying a spear? Uh, if you are, turn to 391. If you do not have a spear, turn to 378. Okay, uh, we do not have a spear. We only have a sword, uh, leather armor, and a potion of fortune. Okay, so we do not have a spear, so let's turn to 378. Okay, uh, you draw your sword and lunge at the huge white beast. Yeti, skill 11 and stamina 12. If you win, turn to 67. Okay. So uh, you can all uh, you can already see the uh, the difficulty uh, with this book because even so early on in the game uh, we already have to fight a skill eleven and stamina twelve yeti which is uh, quite tricky or rather will be quite tricky. Um, just bear with me, I don't have the dice program open yet. Okay, now I have the dice program opened. Um, right, so skill 11 and stamina 12. My skill is 12, so I'm at an advantage. Now you can probably guess why I uh, I sort of quote-unquote cheat at the start and keep rolling until I get the best skill, or at least a skill of at least 10. Um, you know, uh, this battle is difficult if you don't have a skill at least 10. Um, that's why uh, it always annoys me at the start of these books where it says, uh, "Oh, uh, even the most, uh, even the one with the, uh, even a player with the worst dice rolls or whatever can still get through the book slightly easy, uh, slightly easily, or mostly easily, or whatever." I disagree because this is more or less the best route, and uh, we already have to fight S skill eleven and stamina twelve yeti. So there we go. Anyway, so. We roll for him first, then for me. Okay, so he gets uh, a 7, that's 18. And I get an 8, that's 20. So 18 to 20. Okay, and that puts him down to 10. Okay, now uh, he gets a 3, that's 14, I get um, 23, so 14 to 23, and as luck would have it, um, the dice rolls are in my favour, so I probably could have done this with lower skill anyway, but uh, it's just luck, isn't it? Um, okay, so he gets 8, that's 19, and I get uh, I get 15, so 19 to 15. So he hurts me. So that's put my stamina down to 21. Because I've already lost a stamina point. Can't remember where though, to be honest with you, because I lasted this a week ago. Um, okay, so he gets an 8, that's 19 again. I get 9, that's 21. So 19 to 21, I win. That's good, so that puts him down to 6. Again, don't bother using luck. Because uh, my skill is so good. Um, he gets 10, that's 21. I get 4, that's 16. So 21 to 16, he wins. That puts me down to 19 stamina. Okay. It's a tough battle, this. Um, okay. He gets a 7, that's 18, I get a 5, that's 17. So 18 to 17, and he wins again. So that puts me down to 17 stamina. See, this is a difficult battle, even with the best possible starting skill. Even with the best possible starting skill. It's a difficult battle. You try doing this with, with skill 8 or something stupid like that, you'll find this battle tough. Assuming you're playing it fairly, of course, like I am. Um, 
well, at least the battle fairly anyway, not the uh, not the initial skill uh, that I have. Um, anyway, so he gets a 5, that's uh, 16. I get a 7, that's 19. So 16 to 19. That puts him down to 4. Okay, he gets a 5, that's 16. I get a 5, that's 17. So 16 to 17. Puts him down to 2. Um, 3, 4, 5. Yeah, so, yeah, I was just counting up and seeing if I have hurt him five times, which I have. Okay, last one then, hopefully. I hope. Um, he gets a 9, that's 20. I get a 12, that's 24. So that was quite close. 20 to 24, and that means I defeat him. And then he's down to naught, which means he's dead, and that's that. Get rid of the buzzing. Okay, so... Um, if you win, turn to 67, which I did, so let's turn to 67. Uh, you kneel down beside the fur trapper and turn him over slowly. His eyes are barely open and blood trickles down from the corner of his mouth. Uh, the yeti has, has gouged deep wounds in his chest and you realise that there is no hope of saving him. Uh, with a great effort, he reaches up and grabs you round the neck pulling you down so that you can hear his dying words. He thanks you for trying to save him and insists on telling you his secret. In terrible pain, he struggles to whisper his story. He tells you that he has lived in the mountains for most of his life, hunting animals and trading their furs, um, but for the last five years he has been searching for the legendary crystal caves. These caves have been cut out of a glacier by the followers of the Snow Witch, a beautiful yet evil sorceress, who is trying to use her dark powers to bring on an ice age so that she can rule supreme, supremely um, over the whole world. Uh, the entrance to the crystal caves is high up on this very mountain. It is open but hidden by an illusion. The unfortunate fur trapper found it by accident only yesterday when he saw one of the Snow Witch's warriors seemingly walk straight through an ice wall and disappear. Now, the trapper left a piece of fur hanging over the entrance so that he could find it again the next day. Sadly, the Yeti has put an end to his hopes. He asks you to enter the caves to slay the vile Snow Witch and leave uh, the vile Snow Witch rather, and leave her followers uh, without their leader. There are legends about great treasures being frozen into the wall of the Snow Witch's lair, which would provide ample reward. The fur trapper suddenly grips you hard and then falls back silently into the snow. He's dead. Uh, you cover him with snow before deciding what to do. Um, Fifty gold pieces await you if you return with evidence of the Yeti's death to Big Jim's son. But the thought of a quest through the crystal caves beneath Icefinger Mountains excites you, and you decide to set off to find them. Turn to 25. There's no option to choose the, uh, the 50 gold pieces, of course. Um... Okay, so we're turning to 25. Let's do that now, there we go. Now that the snow has stopped falling, the sky is clear and blue. The air is cold and crisp, and the snow crunches beneath your feet. Slowly you make your way up the mountainside, looking for the cave entrance marker left by the fur trapper. Suddenly you hear a distant rumbling from above, the terrifying sound of an avalanche. Test your luck. If you are lucky, turn to 163. If you are unlucky, turn to 109. Okay, our luck score is currently... 9. So we need a luck score... Uh, we need a t um, so we need to roll two dice, and the total needs to be nine or less. Otherwise, uh, and that means I'm lucky. If it's ten or more, that means I'm unlucky. Here we go. Okay, I get a five, so I'm lucky. But I have to deduct a luck point. <clears throat> okay. I think if you don't... Um, if you're unlucky there, you have to test your skill... 
um, and then test luck again or something like that. It's just a bit annoying, really. It's a bit annoying as it's very luck based and skill based. You use lots of dice rolls. If you fail them, then I think you die. Anyway, so we were lucky, so we're going to turn to 163. Uh, you look up to see great cascades of snow tumbling down the mountain. Fortunately, the avalanche sweeps down a ridge adjacent to the one you are climbing. Turn to 363. You make your way slowly up the mountain until you reach a rock face that is too steep to climb. Uh, you walk around the side until you see a massive wall of ice which completely blocks a gully between two peaks of the mountain, uh, the glacier. Uh, your heart leaps as you catch sight of the piece of fur left hanging on the wall of ice by the trapper. Although you cannot see the entrance, you walk straight ahead. You shut your eyes as you think you are about to walk into the wall of ice, but you walk straight through the illusion and find yourself inside a long tunnel carved into the ice. You walk down it and soon arrive at a T-junction. If you wish to turn left, turn to 395. If you wish to turn right, turn to 215. We are going to go right, so we're going to turn to 215. Now the tunnel opens out into a small cavern which is empty apart from a brass bowl resting on top of an ice plinth. The bowl contains a yellow liquid and a wooden ladle. If you wish to drink some of the liquid, turn to 24. If you would rather walk back out of the cavern without drinking the liquid, turn to 56. We're going to drink the liquid, so we're going to turn to 24. Now, the liquid sends a glow through your body and you feel wonderfully warm. You have swallowed a potion made by the Snow Witch that keeps her followers from feeling the cold. Add three stamina points. Let's do that now. Okay, that puts me up to 20, so that's quite good. So, uh, some of the Yeti's wounds are, are healed. Um, the potion also cures frostbite. Any skill points that you may have lost because of frostbite are now restored. With renewed vigour, you walk back out of the cavern. Turn to 56. Don't have frostbite. You walk past the entrance tunnel on your left and continue on down the main tunnel. Turn to 395. The tunnel bends round to the right. As you turn the corner, you almost bump into a tall, pale-skinned humanoid coming the other way. He is wearing a white cloak with a hood pulled over his head. He is a mountain elf, one of the Snow Witch's followers. Will you nod your head at him and walk by nonchalantly? Turn to 89. Tell him you have come to join the Snow Witch's followers. Turn to 274. Or attack him with your sword. Turn to 17. Okay, we are going to tell him that we are uh, uh, that we are come to join the Snow Witch's followers, and, turn, and we're going to turn to 274. We are come to join the Snow Witch's followers. Turn to 274. Now the mountain elf looks at you in disbelief and says, Nobody of good heart would wish to join the Snow Witch. I'm only here because of this. Throwing back his hood, the elf reveals a metal collar around his neck which glows in the semi-darkness. Only the obedience collar makes me serve her. He continues in a dour voice. Oh, he continues in a dour voice. If you wish to reiterate your desire to join the Snow Witch, turn to 22. If you'd rather change your story and tell the elf that you intend to slay her, turn to 264. We're going to change our story and tell the elf that we intend to slay her. Turn to 264. The mountain elf looks at you and smiles. Now you're talking, he says. Kill her and free us. Here, take my cloak to disguise yourself and follow this tunnel until it branches. Take the right hand fork. Good luck. You shake the elf's hand and run off down the tunnel. Turn to 136. Okay, a couple of things. 
If he's serving her because of the thing around his neck, then why is he betraying her? Surely the thing around his neck should prevent him from betraying her. Uh, secondly, um, actually that's all I have to say about that really. Yeah, so surely the thing around his neck should prevent uh, him from betraying his leader. Anyway, 136. Uh, but we're going to take the cloak, of course. So, whoops, take the cloak. There we go. So we now have a cloak. And we are going to go to 136. You soon arrive at the fork in the tunnel that the mountain elf mentioned, and, and deciding to take his advice, you enter the tunnel to your right. Turn to 106. <clears throat> Okay, further ahead, in the left-hand wall of the tunnel, you see a gap. You walk up to it and peer around to see a cave in which a Neanderthal is stripping the skin off a moose, making it ready for the large simmering stew pot behind him. He is working very slowly and is being yelled at by the gnome cook, who is wearing a white apron and waving a wooden spoon in the air. If you wish to enter the crude kitchen, turn to 95. If you if you would rather creep past the entrance, turn to 267. You know, it's a funny word, Neanderthal, because there's so many different ways that people pronounce it, and I've never known which one is right. But the first time I ever heard it spoken, it was Neanderthal. But sometimes people say Neanderthal. Some people also say Neanderthal, like they, the H isn't silent. Uh, or Neand I've never heard Neanderthal, though, but it's either Neanderthal, Neanderthal, or Neanderthal. And I've always said Neanderthal, so that's what... I will say here, if you say it differently, I do not care. Okay, um, okay, so there's the gnome. Uh, it's funny that he's a gnome, because I always thought gnomes had a beard and a red hat and a fishing rod, so I'm unsure what makes him different from any other mythical creature, to be honest. Anyway, um, we are going to enter the makeshift, uh, the makeshift crude kitchen and turn to 95. But yeah, there are the Neanderthal and the gnome. So we're going to go to 95. The gnome runs up to you and shouts, get out, dinner will not be ready for another two hours. You will hear the bell. Mind you, you look a little worse for wear, so you can have this stale cake if you wish. The gnome points at a piece of cake lying on the table. If you wish to take the cake and leave, Turn to 290. If you would rather attack the Snow Witch's servants, turn to 187. Uh, we're actually going to attack them, so turn to 187. As you draw your sword, the gnome yells an order to the dull-witted Neanderthal, telling him to kill you. The Neanderthal grunts and stands up, pushing the table away from him. He picks up a carving knife and a stall as a shield, and lumbers forward to attack. Neanderthal, skill 7, stamina 8, if you win, 10 to 179. Okay, so we're fighting a Neanderthal. You skill 7 and stamina 8. I know I don't need to put a comma after that, but it's my OCD. Anyway, um, okay, so we do it for him first. Which wrong one? Need the dice, that's it. Uh, is it skill 7, stamina 8? Yeah. Okay, so him first, then me, like always. Okay, so 13, uh, 20, yeah, 13, 20. So he's down to 6 now. Um, 15, 21. He's easier than the Yeti, famous last words. Ten, um, nineteen. That's two. Eleven, nineteen, and that's that. So I've defeated the Neanderthal. I know I don't need a comma, but I'll put one anyway because of my OCD. Okay, so that's that. Let's get rid of the buzzing. If there is any, I can't hear any, but there might be something wrong with my uh, headphones. I don't know. Okay, um, 
Okay, okay, what am I doing? Oh yeah, we won, so we're going to 179. He uses a carving knife and a stall as a shield and lumbers forward today. Anyway, so 179, that's quite close again, that's good. Okay. Uh, the gnome does not want to end up like the Neanderthal and runs out of the cave shouting for help. If you wish to search through the cupboards and risk the gnome returning with reinforcements, turn to 194. If you'd rather leave the cave immediately, turning left into the tunnel, turn to 198. Okay, we're going to search through the cupboards, otherwise it renders uh, defeating the Neanderthal redundant. Okay, so we're going to turn to 194, which again is quite close. Excuse me. Which again is quite close, which, uh, which is good. Okay, the cupboards are full of pots, pans, bowls and spoons. One cupboard is locked, and you have to prise it open with your sword. It contains the gnome's personal possessions, a silver flute, a rune-carved wooden stick painted with blue and yellow hoops, an old withered rose, and an old leather-bound book entitled The Secrets of Toads. Will you? Uh, blow the flute, 10 to 74. Read the runes on the stick, 10 to 345. Smell the rose, 10 to 317. Uh, read the book turn to 356, or leave the possessions and turn left back into the tunnel. Turn to 198. Okay, and we will find out what happens next... No, I'm only joking. Uh, we are going to do this now. <laughs> okay, so first of all, we're going to smell the rose. So we're going to go... Where we're going, rather. Gonna. I hate, that, I hate it when people say uh, gonna in, instead of going to. I'm going. We're going to smell the rose first. So turn to 317. No such word as gonna, it's going to, which is actually means the same thing as will. We will uh, smell the rose. Anyway, uh, enough of that. Uh, despite being withered, the rose smells fresh and fragrant. As you inhale, you feel as though you are breathing new life into your lungs. Add three stamina points. Let's do that now. Okay, that's nearly up to maximum stamina now. So 23 is what I had at the start of uh, this video, I think. Yep. Maybe, I can't remember. Okay, so anyway, up to 23 again. Um, add three stamina points. If you have not done so already, you may blow the flute, turn to 74. Read the runes on the stick, turn to 345. Read the book, turn to 356. If you do not wish to do any of the any of the above, you may leave the cave and turn left into the tunnel, turn to 198. Okay, we are going to read the book. Turn to 356. Here we go. Uh, flicking up the clasp which keeps the book shut, a tiny hidden needle grazes your finger. There is poison on its tip to trap unwary thieves. Lose four stamina points. Great. Back to 19. So we 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 have a net gain of minus one stamina points there, which is fantastic. Obviously, I'm, I'm very pleased. Um, if you are still alive, you may open the book, turn to 97, or if you have not done so already, you may blow the flute, turn to 74, read the runes on the stick, turn to 345, smell the rose, turn to 317. If you do not wish to do any of the above, you may leave the cave and turn left into the tunnel, turn to 198. Anyway, so we are going to read the book, so turn to 97. In, in for a penny, in for a pound. which means we've come this far, we might as well go a little bit further, seeing as we uh, already got the poison from the book, we might as well read it now. There is no writing in the book, just a recess cut in the pages which holds a talisman on a golden chain. The talisman is a jade frog. If you wish to put the chain around your neck, turn to 327. If you would prefer to leave it in the book, you may. Um, yeah, you may. If you have not done so already, there needs to be a full stop after you may. If you have not done so already, do one of the following. Blow the flute, turn to 74. Read the runes on the stick, turn to 345. Smell the rose, turn to 317. If you do not wish to do any of the above, you may leave the cave and turn left into the tunnel, turn to 198. Okay, so we are going to take the talisman 327. 327. You are now wearing an amulet of courage. Add two skill points, which I don't need. If you're not done so already, you may blow the flute, turn to 74, read the runes on the stick, turn to 345, smell the rose, turn to 317. If you don't wish to do any of the above, you may leave the cave and turn left into the tunnel, turn to 198. Okay, so we have um, an amulet of courage. I'll just say we have it, just in case it's needed later. But, um, but I don't need the skill points, obviously. Okie dokie, I'll start a new line there, actually. There we are, jolly good. Okay, what are we doing now? We are going to 
Read the runes on the stick, turn to 345. There's a lot of good stuff in this names cupboard, isn't there? Uh, your knowledge of runes is limited, and you put the stick in your backpack, hoping to decipher it later. If you're not done so already, you may. Blow the flute, turn to 74. Smell the rose, turn to 317. Read the book, turn to 356. If you're not wish to do any of the above, you may leave the cave and turn left into the tunnel, turn to 198. Okay, so we have the rune stick. So I'll just say, uh, rune stick. Runed stick. Um, okay, what are we doing now? We are going to blow the flute, turn to 74. You blow into the flute and a jolly tune comes from it without you having to play a note. You decide to put the magic flute in your backpack. If you have not done so already, you may. Read the runes on the stick, turn to 345. Smell the rose, turn to 317. Read the book, turn to 356. If you do not wish to do any of the above, you may leave the cave and turn left in the tunnel and turn to 198. So we have the flute, magic flute or whatever. Silver flute, I don't know. I'll just say magic silver flute. There we go. Magic silver flute. So we've pretty much cleared out the cupboard, haven't we? Anyway, so we are going to leave. So turn to 198. Finally, we do that. Here we go. In the distance, you hear chanting voices. Before long, the tunnel ends at the entrance to a large cavern. Kneeling down before an ice effigy in the shape of a demon, their hooded faces pressed to the ice floor in worship, are ten of the Snow Witch's followers. There are two exits from the cave, one to your left and one to your right. If you are wearing a cloak, turn to 384. If you are not wearing a cloak, turn to 260. We are wearing a cloak. Proof is there. Cloak, we are wearing it well that just means we have it so strictly speaking we can put it on now but you know what i mean so wearing a cloak turn to 384 let's have a look at this ice effigy oh what a demon what an evil demon uh, blasphemy blas um that is blasphemy that is breaking one of the ten commandments okay so 384 You pull down the hood of your cloak as far as possible and walk towards the tunnel exit on your right. Test your luck. If you are lucky, turn to 295. If you are unlucky, turn to 370. Right, so we're going to have to, we're going rather to have to test our luck. We only have eight magic points. So I need this dice roll to be eight or less to be lucky. Here we go. Six. We are lucky, but we have to lose another luck point. So we're down to seven. <clears throat> okay, we are lucky. Um, where was I? Oh yeah, 295. Let's go. None of the worshippers... Oh, oh, I love it. They've actually used the uh, the proper grammar there. None always takes singular, because it means not one. You know, most people say, none of the worshippers suspect. No, none means not one. So it's none of, not one of the worshippers suspects. It's singular. None of the worshippers suspects that you are an intruder, and you are able to walk through their temple without trouble. Into the other tunnel, turn to 137. Okay, where are we now? The, uh, the tunnel ends quite soon at a T-junction. To your left, you can hear cries for help. If you wish to turn left, turn to 311. If you wish to turn right, turn to 125. We are going to go left, 311. <clears throat> the tunnel ends at the edge of a pit, out of which a dwarf is trying to climb, but he keeps on slipping back. The floor of the pit is covered with large ice boulders which have crashed down from a shaft above the pit. One lands on the dwarf's shoulders and you hear wild cheers from the top of the shaft as he tumbles onto the floor. Uh, the dwarf sees you and shouts, Curse you, stranger, if you do not aid me. I see that you are not wearing a collar. If you wish to help the dwarf out of the pit, turn to 376. If you would rather ignore his pleas and walk back to the junction, turn to 57. Let me just read that again by myself. Oh, I see. Okay, so, we're going to help the dwarf, of course. So, 376. You lie down and lean over the edge of the pit and tell the dwarf to grab your arm. Much... 
Much to the annoyance of the spectators above, uh, the dwarf escapes from the pit. You run together back to the junction where the dwarf turns right. You tell the dwarf that you intend to carry straight on to find the Snow Witch, as turning right will lead you back to the Hall of Worship. Uh, now the dwarf tells you that he must escape quickly and return to his village now that he is free. He thanks you for helping him and hands you a leather bag, then runs off, but before he disappears he turns and shouts, Beware the white rat. Or, or rather, beware of the white rat. You open the leather, ba uh, the leather bag and find a sling and three iron balls. You pack them away and set off along the tunnel, turn to 125. Okay, so we have a sling um, with... Three iron balls. 125. The tunnel through the glacier soon leads into the mountainside itself, and the walls change from ice to bare rock. You enter a large cavern which has three other exits leading from it. One to your left, one to your right, and the main one, carved as a giant skull, lying, def uh, lying directly opposite. As you enter, an ugly robed man steps out of the mouth of the skull, holding a glass prism in his outstretched hands. He commands you to turn back as only the Snow Witch's personal servants are allowed inside the mountain. If you have a magic flute, you may wish to tell him that you have been asked to come and play it for the Snow Witch, 10 to 299, or you may attack him with your sword, 10 to 156. There he is. Very sinister. Big eyebrows. Okay, we are going to attack him with our sword. 10 to 156. Here we go. The ugly man sneers as you draw your sword. He rubs the prism and suddenly three identical images of himself appear. They walk towards you. Each one has a dagger raised in his right hand. Two of the images must be illusions, but which will you strike with your sword? Will you strike the man to your left, turn to 99, strike the man in the middle, turn to 307, or strike the man to your right, turn to 232? Okay, we are going to strike the image on our right, turn to 232. Right is right. The illusionist screams in pain as your sword cuts into his side. He drops to the floor as his other two images fade away. As you step over him, he starts to laugh and stands up. His wound completely healed. If you wish to thrust your sword at him again, turn to 261. If you wish to try to smash his prism, turn to 72. We're going to smash the prism, turn to 72. It's a bit like that um, part on uh, Conan the Destroyer, which everyone seems to hate that film for some reason, Conan the Destroyer. I will say this now, I love Conan the Destroyer. It's much better than the first one. It's a great adventure, despite the only bad thing about it is, is it has Grace Jones in it. I just I just don't think she fits in that sort of film. But, but you know, it, it's it's a small complaint. But, um, yeah, I love that film. I, I loved Conan the Destroyer. Wonderful adventure. Really good kids movie. I really enjoyed that when I was little. Um, yeah, it's just so much better than the first one. The first one is still good, but it's a bit sort of depressing. The second one is a nice sort of nice little adventure. I I, I like that. You know, it's a bit like um, um, Never Ending Story or a film like that. One of those sort of kids. I don't think it's really meant for kids though. But it has. It, well, I watched it when I was a kid and I enjoyed it. So anyway. Um, Unfortunately, I've just completely forgotten where I was. Um, I've just completely forgotten. I'll just find back where I was. Sorry, I went on a tangent there. I'll just have to find back where I was. Um, I'll be right back. Sorry about that. It was uh, paragraph 72. I just got sidetracked. I, I shouldn't start talking about rubbish when I'm in the middle of paragraphs, because I forget every time. My short-term memory is awful. Um... But yeah, Conan the Destroyer is a wonderful film. I, I don't understand why people don't like that. I think Nostalgia Critic did a video moaning about it, but it's just 
a great film. It's just a wonderful adventure. I really enjoyed it. Anyway, um, and I recommend it. Anyway, you pretend to give up the fight and then suddenly leap at the illusionists. Catching him momentarily off guard, you manage to snatch the prism out of his hands and throw it onto the floor. It shatters into tiny pieces and the illusionist turns and flees into the skull mouth, screaming at the top of his voice. Smoke rises from the shattered fragments... Uh, I'll say again, smoke rises from the shattered fragments of the prism. It's like the bit in Conan the Destroyer when, he, when uh, Conan smashes all the mirrors and then the wizard dies. I uh, love that bit. Anyway, uh, smoke rises from the shattered fragments of the prism and forms itself into the shape of a bald, fat man, a genie. Uh, hovering in midair, he bows and thanks you for releasing him. He tells, you that, he tells you that if you call on him, he will make you invisible just once as a token of his gratitude. Uh, without saying another word, the image shimmers and disappears. You now have to decide which way to head. Will you enter the tunnel to your left, turn to 266, enter the tunnel with a skull mouth, turn to 288, enter the tunnel to your right, turn to 49. Okay, first of all, I'm going to write down that I have um, genie invisibility visibility uh, one use. There we go. Now make a new line. Um, yes, that's that. Um, so I have that to use whenever I need it. Um, and then I am going to end the video there. So next video we will start on paragraph 72. I'll just write that down. Paragraph 7. I'll just put it here actually. 72. It's very similar to 77, isn't it? That's quite a coincidence. Um, anyway, yes, and we'll decide to, whether we're going left, right, or into the skull mouth. So, thank you for watching. hope you've enjoyed this, and I will see you in part three, I hope, very soon. Thanks again, and goodbye.